Blog Talk Radio. Hello, this is Brian Foster on Kardak Radio, presenting the program Spiritism and the Spirit World Around Us. Hello, tonight our program is How the Spirit World Communicates to Us. First, if you would like to call in and ask any questions, dial 858-769-4705. Again, that number is 858-769-4705. Or if you'd like to use the chat function and you're streaming this program live on Kardak Radio, scroll down to the bottom of of the page and you'll see a spot to sign in to the chat room and please ask any question you would like to ask so how does the spirit world communicate to us and there's a mar there's lots of information on this first i want to tell you though that i'm i am myself am not a a medium in the classical sense I mean, we are all are intuitive mediums and i'll get into that later I have worked as a consultant medium, as other mediums actually channel spirits. So tonight, I really want to talk about, in survey, what has been written by Alan Kardec and other spiritist writers, such as uh, Chico Xavier, on exactly how spirits communicate to us. And I thought this might be interesting to many people. Well, let me... Let me begin by saying that mediums attract spirits who are tuned to them and vice versa. Now, that's what's been told to us in the book, In the Realms of Mediumship, uh, psychographed again by San Francisco, uh, Francisco C. Chico, C. Xavier, uh, the, the spirit was Andre Luis who dictated this information to him. And there is a discussion about mediums. And Andre is in, a, in this group, and here's his lecture. Tell the group that minds on different levels will, by their inherent gap of knowledge, be able to communicate only simple messages. He supplies an example of a high spirit talking to a primitive mind, where the high spirit could only assist a primitive person in terms to help them cure an illness or problems with a herd of cattle, for instance. The same for low spirits talking to an educated medium. Only simple communication is possible. He goes on to explain to the group that we attract spirits who are attuned to us as much as we are attuned to them. And it is true that each of us can only give according to what he or she has. It is unquestionable that each receives according to what he or she gives. So hence, a medium who is advanced spiritually will attract and successively communicate with higher order spirits. And he tells us further, since the mind is the basis for all mediumistic manifestations, in whatever ways they are expressed, it is crucial that we enrich our thought with moral and cultural treasures because they are the only treasures that make it possible to fixate the light that descends upon us from the highest realms through the spirits of wisdom and love who oversee our lives. Therefore, increasing spirituality for a medium causes a beneficial feedback loop. As the medium improves, so does the communication with the higher spirit, which leads to greater knowledge and understanding of the spirit world and our place within it. So I thought that might be interesting, that this is how, this is one of the fundamental uh, facts to know, is how is the fact that we must be a, a successful medium is what we are told is one also must be educated. First, you know, read the Spirit's book, read the Medium's book, Alan Kardec, and be spiritually, you know, be, be a spiritual person. Live the doctrine as much as possible. I, 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 I don't completely live the doctrine, of course. I'm, I'm extremely imperfect, but attempt to, right? Try to, to think good thoughts, try to forgive others, you know, live charitably, fraternally. Um, those are the things then will invite they invite higher spirits to come talk to us. So let's get to the subject. How the spirit world communicates to us. 
So there is constant communication from the spirit realm to our earthly physical world. And in fact, in one of the books I was reading, it was very interesting where uh, this group of spirits were talking to the Reverend G. Val Owen, and they were saying we all, first of all, no, it's not like we're in a different, complete world. We, we really all are part and parcel of the spirit world. The spirit universe came first. The physical universe is a subset of the spiritual universe. And therefore, there is communication possible. I, I liken it to the depths of the ocean. If you are in the higher realms of the ocean, let's say you're in the spirit world, you see a little bit of light coming through. Uh, the weight of the water isn't too great. But then you're here on Earth like we are. The weight of the water is immense. The light filtering down through the waters is almost dark. And yes, there is communication possible between higher levels, right? The, the lesser depth of the ocean to the greater depth of the ocean, but it's difficult. And I, that is, is a good analogy for how spirits talk to us. It's not simple. And we are, for the most part, un, unaware, right? But there are people who have been given certain talents or have worked hard on those talents to receive messages from that different plane, that different dimension, right? And these individuals have been with us throughout history. They are called by various names, you know, witches, medicine men and women, psychics, priests, nuns have all had uh, this ability, you know, uh, a subset of them. And we shall call them by the name that, you know, it's used throughout in spiritism, which is mediums. And mediumship means means the ability to channel, talk to uh, the other side. So first, why are people mediums? So nothing exists in the spirit universe, including us, without a purpose. And the spirit realm has given our present time the gift of mediumship for a purpose. And in the book, In the Realms of Mediumship, another the Spirit tells us why more souls on earth are being given the gift of communication at this present time. This is what they say. The medianistic phenomena is not new. Only the way it manifest, manifests itself is new because the priesthood of various creeds have been stagnated for many centuries in the displays of outward worship. Most notably, Christianity which should be the largest and simplest of the schools of faith, has long been crystallized in the superficiality of its churches. Thus, it was necessary to free its principles for the benefit of the world, which nowadays, from a scientific point of view, is bathed in the light of a new era. That is why this, the planet's unseen government decided that mediumship should be brought from the clergy into the public square so that the notion of eternity through the survival of the soul would awaken the anesthetized mind of the populace. So this is very interesting. And I get a lot of pushback when I talk to some Christian sites, you know, uh, and they say, no, we cannot talk to spirits. That is, is completely rejected in the Bible. And yet we're being told by the spirit world that mediumship was a talent given to you know, a lot of the, the priests and of not only the Catholic Church but other religions. And yet has not been handled to their satisfaction. And now they want that ability to communicate to us a more broader populace. And people, and there's other ways, right? NDEs, etc. So they the spirit world wishes to send us the information that we are indeed immortal souls who are on the path to perfection. This realization that karma is real, brought to us by spiritism, and although there's also other religions, that no one escapes the damages they have done or doesn't benefit from the good they have accomplished is the major lever that will be used to bring back and balance people's materialistic tendencies with the spiritualistic needs. So the earth, our culture, back in primitive times, people were very spiritual. But what else did they have? They didn't have material goods. In our culture, we've advanced to materialism 
you know, the pendulum has swung all the way side to the to materialism, and yet people are unhappy. People feel that, and so therefore, the spirit world is going to give us the method to increase your spirituality by talking to the spirit world. So let's get to it. What are the different types of mediums? So, first, I have news for you. Everyone is a medium of some sort, even me. Amazing. All of us receive thoughts from the spirit world. While we may not be conscious of these mental telegrams passing through our body, they are there. When a closed guardian spirit wishes to convey a message to us, they speak directly to our brain. When they speak, we don't hear words but thoughts, and we interpret these ideas as our own. So, let's talk about the first type of medium, the one that we all are, inspirational medium. According to Alan Kardec, in the book of mediums, we are all inspirational mediums. All of us are influenced by the good and bad spirits around us. Alan Kardec goes on to say, inspiration comes to all of us. From spirits who influence for good or evil in every circumstance of our lives and in every resolution we make. And it may therefore be truly said that in this respect, everyone is a medium. For there is no one who does not have about him his familiar spirits who do their utmost to suggest to literary or pernicious counsels to those with whom they are connected. A truth which where we duly penetrated with its reality and importance, would frequently lead us to oppose a more effectual resistance to the suggestions of evil by seeking the inspiration of our guardian angel in our moments of uncertainty as to what we should say or do. At some times, we should invoke that watchful guardian with fervor and confidence as a providentially appointed friend, and if we did so, we would often be astonished at the new ideas which would arise in our minds. As through by enchantment, whether for the taking of an important decision or for the accomplishing of our special work. So, have we all had moments of inspiration, flashes of brilliance which provide some key, a piece of knowledge that we have been searching for? These sparks are caused in, in a lot of cases by Spirits who choose to influence us. They use the gems given to us, but first filter the idea through your conscience and instinct to determine the validity of the suggestion. So as Alan Kardec said, there are good and not so good spirits around us. There are spirits who would love to give us extre- you know, extremely bad ideas, just like you have when you were, let's say, in middle school when you had friends give you suggestions that were absolutely ridiculous and would probably cause you bodily harm, but much to the amusement of your friends. This is you know, how lesser, immature, ignorant spirits would talk to us. Therefore, remember, we have two things with us that we should always use when we are thinking about, you know, when we receive thoughts or we have a new thought in our, in our head. We have our conscience, which is the set of universal, the set of divine laws that we have that we have modified and interpreted throughout our successive lives into a law library of what we should and shouldn't do. And we have our instinct again of when things are prudent or not prudent to perform. Alan Kardec goes on to say that people of genius are mediums without being aware of it. These people have an innate sense to call superior spirits, to provide the assistance they seek. Alan Kardec completes a section on inspirational mediums with a communication from the spirit world. This is the question, what are the primal causes of inspiration? And what he is told that the communication of assaults by a spirit. Is inspiration confined to the revelation of great things? No, it is often has reference to the most commonplace circumstances of your daily life. For instance, you may have thought of going somewhere, but a secret voice tells you not to, because there is danger in the way. Art tells you to do something which you have not thought of doing. This is inspiration. There are very few people who are not more or less inspired in this way at certain moments. So we are all touched. We are all affected by the spirit. We may not know it. We may reject it. 
but we are. We are subtly given direction by the unseen hand of the spirit realm. It's marvelous, isn't it, to think about that. Now, let's talk about the communication portal. So, René Descartes, the, the 17th century philosopher, French philosopher, who has been called the founder of modern philosophy, believed the pineal gland located in the center of the brain was our conduit to the spirit world. And he was the man, René, who said, I think, therefore I am. And the other second is his theory. In the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, we are told, toward the end of the 19th century, Madame Blavatsky, the founder of Theosophy, identified the third eye discovered by the comparative anatomist of her time with the eye of Shiva of the Hindu mysteries, and concluded that the penal body of modern man is an atrophied vestige of this organ of spiritual vision. This theory is still immensely popular today. So, while modern science and current philosophy regulates the penile gland to a mass which produces the melatonin hormone, literature provided by spiritist mediums psychographing from knowledgeable spirits place the penile gland at the apex and determine if a person has the ability to transfer messages from the spirit realm to us. So there are and I've heard over and over again Andre Louise talk about that in his books. So let's talk about the different classifications of mediums. Now, many people have many different classifications, but I'm going to take the major areas only. I didn't want to make this too long because Alan Gadek has many sets and subsets. So I just wanted to survey, I think, the major classifications just for people to hear for them to be interested, just kind of see if they fit in or if one of the friends fit into these categories. And also, many people fit in multiple categories. It's not, you're just not just one. You can be many. So this, this is what um, my rough review is. There's sensitive or impressible mediums, the ability to feel the presence of spirits, and other categories require this ability. I do, this is one I do have uh, I don't know how sensitive I am or not, but I can feel if some spirit is, is very close to me. A clairaudient medium. These mediums hear the voice of spirits. A trance medium. They only transmit what is said to them by a spirit. Clairvoyant mediums. The ability to see spirits. Healing mediums. The ability to heal by the laying on of hands. Automatic writing mediums, the ability to obtain direct writing from a spirit. Inspirational medium, that's what we discussed, right? We're all inspirational mediums. And presentiment mediums, the ability to, to know the future. And I'm sure there are other more knowledgeable people who have better inclusive and exhaustive lists. But I, I believe this is a, a fair introduction to the broad types of persons who have the ability to transmit the thoughts and actions from the spirit world to us. Many mediums have more than one of the above talents that I've mentioned. The great Brazilian medium, uh, Chico Xavier, had, had all the above capabilities. So let me take a quick break, and we will come back and we'll start with what is a sensitive or an impressive uh, medium. And I'll bring you the Christmas wishes, wishes because this is Christmas Day. I forgot to tell you, this is December 25th, 2016. And this is our Christmas Day. So here's Christmas wishes. Christmas wishes. Lord, our Master, When I was a child, whenever Christmas arrived, I would adorn your name in flowers made of paper and plead to you in prayer, full of hope, that you would send through Santa a new walking or talking doll. Later, as a daydreaming adolescent, I would ask you for a castle of love and illusion for my ideal whenever I saw announcements about Christmas. Even later, as an old woman, 
whenever I would see Christmas shining at my door, and my poor anxiety was almost killing me. I would multiply prayers and plead that you would give me, in my old affliction, the illusion of being loved. Even though, at the end of the road, I was sad and alone. Today, Lord, as a free soul in the hereafter, where solace refreshes me once again before Christmas lights, I thank you in peace, happy and comforted, the surprises of death and the tears of life. And if I may beg of your generosity, never give me what I most want, but give me what is best for me and the gift of understanding between true humility and peaceful happiness, so that I may look for you day and night, Master of the Heart. Welcome back. Now, let's, before we begin on sensitive, our impressionable mediums, Let's again, if you wish to call in and ask any questions, it's the number is 858 769 4705. 858 769 4705. Or write me a question in the chat. I see people in the chat room. I haven't seen any questions yet, but people have logged on. If you want to learn more as I'm talking, I do have links within the streaming program to, to different areas of what we're talking about. I, I have my blog site, NW Spiritism. Again, that is NWS in Northwest Spiritism.com. In the blog, I have many articles on NDEs, your destiny, spiritist knowledge. I talk about uh, reincarnation, the process of reincarnation. I have written books uh, on Spiritism 101 which you can certainly download. It's only 99 cents on Kindle. On our Facebook site, Spiritism and the Spirit World Around Us, if you go to the file sections, I have it on PDF. So you can take it on PDF. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a very surface introduction to Spiritism. I have more in-depth knowledge on Explore Your Destiny, which is all about the spirit world, where we fit in the spirit world, what, what is the umbral or the lower zone, the dark abyss, heaven. I have a book on the case for reincarnation. And what these books, what I have done is I've taken literature and I've tried to make it and categorize it and explain it and put it together from Alan Kardec, Chico Safier, Yvonne Friera, and other spiritist writers. I have more... Uh, other books on my site, too, The Problems and Solution, talking about trials that we have, the different trials you have, and why you may have those trials on Earth. The other one is I have Seven Tenets of Spiritism. It's more of, of, of how Spiritism affects you in your daily life. What happens? What, how does Spiritism affect me in my daily life? So there's a lot of information. I also have a link right on top, on the top right of my blog, on the picture of Alan Kardec. You can click on the picture. It takes you right to the EDICEI bookstore, and you can buy a copy of the Spirits book, which I recommend everyone they should do that first. Uh, that way you have it. Now, I understand the reason I've been writing my books is people will read the Spirits book and say, well, that's a bit much to read, and therefore that's why I've tried to take other information and make it in a little bit different flavors. Everyone learns, everyone learns differently, right? Everyone has their own own method. So hopefully that we have enough literature on there to get you interested. And then there's so many good books by uh, Chico Xavier in, in, in English. They've translated a lot of them. It's just a wonderful world to be in, and I recommend that to everyone. Now, let's get to a sensitive or impressionable medium as one of our categories. Have you ever talked or thought about someone who had passed away and then felt goosebumps or a tingly sensation in your arms and shoulders, you may have felt the presence of a spirit. So be careful what you say in your thoughts. Our thoughts, they leave our mind and can draw in unwarranted gifts. Andrew Luis gives an example of this in the book, Workers of the Life Eternal. This is one of the series of books by Andrew Luis, which I recommend. 
If you want to read his book, start with Nosso Lar, N-O-S-S-O, another word, Lar, L-A-R, means our home in Portuguese. There's also a movie. You can look up Nosso Lar, our um, Celestial City. You can rent that on Amazon, I think, for $3.99. That's a wonderful movie. Uh, that's one of the few movies I can watch over and over again. So in this book, Workers of the Life Eternal, during a funeral, a group of people were talking about the deceased. And one man started to reveal that the deceased knew of a man who committed murder but never revealed the name due to the high position of the murderer. Andre Luis describes what happens next. At that moment, a horrendous figure, followed by others no less monstrous, appeared unexpectedly. The figure approached the thoughtless commentator and upon hearing his last words, shook him, crying out, I am the murderer. What do you want from me? Why have you called me? Are you a judge? The narrator was unable to see what I could, but his body was shaken by an involuntary shudder, which drew much laughter from all those present. So examples such as this one are a constant theme in literature inspired by Ronald Luis. Our thoughts are radio waves, indiscriminately radiated in all directions. You never know what a person or spirit will tune in at what time. I always tell everyone I have absolutely no mediumistic ability. But of course I am, as I said before, an inspirational medium, like all of us. But I believe I have the ability to feel, sometimes, not always, the presence of good spirits. When I first started going to spiritist meetings, I wondered what that tingly feeling was in my arms and shoulders and neck. I first thought it was just how I was sitting. But when I left the, the meeting, the feelings would disappear too. And at home or other places, I wasn't able to replicate that sensation. When I took a course in how, learning how to give passes, the transfer of an energy from the spirit to the recipient, I again felt that wave of power flowing through my arms and hands. I soon learned to recognize that sensation. I have it during spirit, spiritist meetings and sometimes when I speak about spiritism. I have also felt it in other circumstances. In my job, I was invited to hear a talk given by Tony Blair, who was the, once the Prime Minister of Great Britain. And I was sitting in the auditorium. I was in one of the rows pretty close, my third or fourth row back. And I felt normal. And then when he walked on stage, I felt a surge of power as if there were many spirits around him. And the impression left when he left the platform. And I'm sure when there are important people, they are reinforced and guided by spirits. So that's a, that's a sensitive medium. Now, a clairaudient medium. Let's talk about that category. So according to the book of, on mediums by Alan Kardec, the def, definition of a clairaudient medium is these mediums hear the voice of spirits sometimes. It is an inner voice that speaks to the interior consciousness. Sometimes it is an exterior voice, clear and distinct as that as a person in the flesh. Clairaudient mediums are thus enabled to enter the conversation with the spirits. And one of the most famous clairaudient mediums in history is Joan of Arc. And when she was about 13, she heard heard from St. Michael, St. Catherine, and St. Margaret, who told her to drive out the English and bring the Dauphin back to Reims for his coronation. Now, let's go to the next one, a trance medium. And I have seen, during mediums meeting, trance mediums at work. They are clairaudient mediums who only transmit what is said to them by the spirits. They often hear nothing while the spirit controls their voice. I was at a medium uh, meeting to help disgruntled uh, spirits. And as in uh, spiritist meetings, and the one I was at uh, in Rio de Janeiro, what the process is to help spirits living in a state of unbalance. These are spirits that have passed away. They are, they are in the umbrella, the lower zone. They Some of them don't even know where they are. Some of them don't even know they are have passed away. So this is not a type of medium's meeting where spirits from deceased family members, you know, et cetera, communicate with those to ease the pain of those, you know, still living. This is more that there's no other uh, spectators around. 
that's just mainly mediums at the table trying to help discarnates. And they're all done by volunteers. So again, spiritism, you're never charged for getting information from spirits. That's if you know that is a gift from God, from the spirit realm, you do not charge for that. And therefore, they mostly work during the day and then at, they meet at night to help our discarnated brothers and sisters who need assistance to re- regain their faculty so they're able to get back on the path to improve themselves. And for those who have read Andre Luz's book, it says, The Messengers Are the work, Workers of the Life Eternal, as I mentioned earlier, what I have witnessed at the meeting follows the pattern of this obsession meeting, medium meetings in the books quite closely. And the meeting started with one of the persons saying a prayer to start the meeting. Next, the meeting talked about their experience since the last meeting. And after the previous information was digested, one of the mediums read passages from one of the spiritist books. They kept their discussions and readings to a strict timetable. At the appointed hour, the lights were dim, and the medium's heads bowed in silence, awaited the first contact. These were papers. There were papers and pens ready at the table to receive any written messages. There are two types of mediums at the meetings. A trance medium is the one is the one the spirits connects with and speaks through their voice. The other type of medium is a counselor medium who engages in conversation with the spirit. A male trance medium started talking and all the conversation was in Portuguese, which I'm not totally competent, and therefore I may misrepresent some situations. But what I heard was the trance medium started shaking, and then, then he said, untie me, untie me, why am I restrained? And the counselor medium came over to sit by the trans medium and put his hand on the trans medium's arm and says, please calm down, calm down. Everything will be fine. And the spirit kept yelling to be free. Finally, the counselor medium told the spirit to go back to sleep and try to contact the group another day when he's able to communicate. This is very disheartening. This poor spirit must have been locked in some sort of his own mind, his own reality of his mind. So then, another. And these come on one after another. It's very interesting coming, going to these meetings. So then a, a woman spirit started talking through a female trans medium. medium. Immediately she began playing about her life in general. Because how could, and this is what she said, how could somebody study, go to school, be educated, wish to be a good wife, and yet spend a long time locked in her own house by her husband? And if that is not enough, her husband then marked her face with a red-hot iron. He burned all of my face. Then she cried and said she was sad. She seemed to believe her face was still disfigured, even though she had left her physical body. Then, this is, this is where it got really interesting, her husband went to another trans meeting. He said, I feel very terrible. I did this. But you know, during those times, the husband totally owned his wife. I immediately thought that this must be from a, you know, a couple from, you know, decades ago, maybe a hundred years ago, when, you know, even in our modern, you know, like in Brazilian society, women had absolutely no rights. And the counselor meeting told him, I understand your regret. And the husband responded, yes, you're right. All I want is her forgiveness. I am very regretful. And this is a very tragic situation, is it not? The wife lives in constant anger what was done to her, and the husband cannot move on due to his realization of his horrible behavior. Her absolute anger is understandable, but it reached the point that her negative thoughts are detrimental to her own health. Let this be a lesson to all of us. We can't dwell on the negative because then it just amplifies. We get into this loop. This woman, this poor woman, had passed away, and she's caught into this loop of anger. And who knows how many decades both have been locked in this, this type of twilight zone. They seem to be connected together in the lower region, unable to progress through forgiveness and love. And the last case I'll, I'll try to summarize is a male spirit who came and told everyone to me how hypocritical and stupid we all are. Then he said, all of you are fools. Do you think you are superior to us? And the counselor meeting replied, no, we don't think that. We just want to give you help and love. And then he said in a loud voice, who are you to give love? Only Jesus reached a high level of love, no one else. The counselor meeting said, we are here in empathy to learn. 
How about you? He was, you know, the counselor me was trying to find a key to start a constructive dialogue. Now, let me also say this. These people that show up in these meeting meetings, the meeting meetings are held at the same time, on the same day, right? Once a week, let's say. And that is because the spirits create a protective boundary around these meetings. When you hold them at the same time, they set everything up. The, the spirits, there's a, a spirit leader of these meetings who, who selects what souls from the umbrella come and get help from the mediums meeting. This is why if you're just starting off on your own, start, meditate in a room and just think that we want to start a mediums medium meeting uh, at this time every week and, and do that, right? If you're not in an area where you can actually take a professional class or something like that, keep at the same time and just start notifying the spirits around you. We are going to have a mediums meeting, you know, let's say 8 o'clock on Thursday night. And that way you'll be protected because, you know, you read stories about people, you know, with the Ouija boards or whatever. And then they, be, they get who, who knows what spirits come and they can be obsessed. So let me go back to the dialogue. So the counselor said, we are here in empathy to learn. How about you? And he thought for a while and says, do you think we also don't have empathy? I have love within my group. And, and then the counselor being says, are you happy with your life? And then the spirit said, I accept my life the way it is. And the counselor being sent him, he was not open to any type of positive conversation, to, told him, okay, so why are you here? If you don't want to listen, then I will have to ask the, you to let others come. Then he laughed and left. And in meetings like this for an entire two hours, short dialogues with spirits who required assistance. And in fact, last actually it was this year, it was earlier this year, I was at another medium, uh, meeting that, that, like this, and this, this woman came through a trans medium, and she said, Zika, Zika, Zika. And, and it goes, oh, I feel terrible. I, I'm sick. I'm, I died. I died because of Zika. And the, the counselor said, oh, that's, you know, we're so sorry for you to have, to have this happen, that you died, you know, because of the Zika virus. But, oh, what's even worse is I wanted, my, I wanted this other woman to die of Zika virus, not me. And I, I kept praying. I wanted her to die, and I still want her to die. I, this was amazing when I heard this. That she was still hated, this other woman. Even hating her, this other woman was alive. This poor woman's spirit was dead, and she still wanted the other woman to die. Who knows what happened? But it just shows you what the quest for revenge and the not forgiving will do to us, not only in this life, but the next life. Imagine like that couple I talked about, being in, in, a, in a, a, a loop for eons. Amazing. So, clairvoyant mediums. Now I know a clairvoyant medium. He's a he's a member of a spirit descent a spirit center in Rio de Janeiro. He can see spirits, and he told me when he, he what he saw when he saw passes are given after spiritist meetings. Now let me just say real quick, just like we have here on NW Spiritism, we have a meeting. Uh, we are going to start our meetings now on Sundays from uh, uh, six o'clock, and so. Six o'clock, we have like a talk for half hour. We discuss spiritism. And then we have passes. And passes are when someone stands in front of you. You, you If you're at the medium, uh, meeting, you sit down, and then a, a, a person goes in front of you and then will kind of put his arms, won't touch you, but put, put his hands kind of waving up and down along your body. There's a spirit behind that person who then takes the universal fluid, uses the physical body of the spiritist to modify the universal fluid into vital fluids that correspond to your, your needs to help rebalance all of your four centers, or chakras as they're called. So, what happened is, is that he said that during this process, the spirits appear to move like robots with very fast and precise movements. As the line of people come into the room, a spirit leads each person to the correct chair. And I can tell you that when I walked in the room, I had no conscious feeling of being told to walk to a certain chair. In fact, after I was told this, 
The next time, I deliberately went to my second choice chair just to see if I could be difficult. Of course, I probably ended up in the seat that was assigned to me, and they probably laughed at me. But I was also told the story of a killer boy medium who works at a government office in Brazil. He's one of those people who assist people and individuals waiting in line for answers to different questions, you know, forms, etc. And then sometimes when a person comes up to him and starts asking questions, he responds to what he sees. But his fellow co-workers, when they detect him speaking to thin air, will gently remind him that he must be speaking with the spirit. And also I know... Uh, like the Valdo Franco and Chico, who could actually see spirits, they could never drive, right? They, they, they would see spirits along the road. Um, it would be impossible for them to drive, so they would never drive themselves. Like if, you're, if you're that type of, of medium, then you better take public transportation or have a driver. So what's another type? A healing medium. So these are mediums that can actually help heal or assist in the process of healing. Now, they don't perform this by themselves, but again, with the guidance of a spirit or spirits. And one of the most famous healing mediums is John of God. And he's the medium who's been on, shown on ABC, CNN, 60 Minutes, and the Oprah Show. He tells no one to stop taking the message. So this is very important. So it's unlike... You know, there's examples of evangelical in the United States where they say, you know, you know, God is healing you, and you know, I'll set your arm, and um, he's like that. Don't go to to the doctor. You will not see any spiritist healing medium ever say, "Stop talking your medicine," or refrain from going to a licensed physician. You know, this and first, John, Eve, John of God, not to mention others, all say he, all he is from God and the spirits. You know, not from him. He doesn't guarantee that everyone will be cured. And the spirits, they know our culture, our society. They're the ones that shaped it. They know what they know what medicine will work, what won't work, and they know how to supplement. Sometimes it's meant it's meant what they give you is is on purpose to supplement with with physical medicine we're taking. So whatever you do with you know healing mediums, keep going to your physician. Now I have pr- I've had friends who've gone to John of God and they've had great experiences. I have not traveled to John of God in Brazil, but I've been to a different healing medium in the city of Rio Novo, Rio Novo, in the state of Minas Gerais in Brazil. It's a state that's next to the state of Rio de Janeiro and it's about a three hour drive from the city of Rio de Janeiro. And this center is called the Parascientific Organization of Adolfo Fritz. In parascientific, it means the, an accessory to science. It's not yet a science, but hopes to be one someday. And the medium who applies or channels this energy is Dr. Fritz, of Dr. Fritz, is Chico Montero. And when I, when I arrived at an old industrial building, there was an inefficient check-in line staffed by volunteers. I gave my name, a sheet of paper with my ailments, and the basic data was printed out. I was directed to wait on some wooden benches to wait until my name was called. And the building was aged but clean. Inside was a spacious and full of places to sit. Outside, people were selling snacks and other small items. There must have been around 200 people in attendance, around 15 volunteers. Periodically, people would be called by an attendant, who, by the way, was very professional. He had the perfect balance of directing people while simultaneously appearing extremely caring. And I waited my turn. And people around me were a various group, old, young, male, and female, uh, most simply dressed, talking to some. I found out that they were, you know, they were help- one lady was there to help with the pregnancy, another vision problems, another assist in healing various wounds, but not, did not want to seem to want to repair themselves. And even with modern methods, I was saying all the problems that people have. And suddenly I was called, so I walked into the room, constructed as a standalone hall inside the old warehouse building. And in the hall, there were many hospital-like gurneys. On, on, you know, there's no wheels. They're lined up, you know, two in each row on a gurney. It was about six to eight rows. On each gurney sat two people. And we sat sitting facing a desk where volunteers were working. There were probably 30 people on, on the gurneys. Older people had trouble walking, sat in chairs along the side of the walls. The hall was filled with a blue light. It had a very calming atmosphere. Everything was perfectly clean. In front of us, for everyone who was facing themselves in the same direction, was Chico Montero. 
and his staff of volunteers. First, they collected the pieces of paper that we carried with us. And next, I saw them look at the pieces of paper one by one, and then a volunteer would staple something to each paper. And on it, and on and on it went as they discussed each form. And after stapling, noise subsided. Chico looked at us, and he proceeded directly to the back of the room. As I was facing forward, I could hear muffled talking, but nothing that I could understand. Finally, Chico appeared in front of me. He looked at me and then held my hand with one of his hands. With the other hand, he touched his fingers to the inside of my elbow, and I felt like a small electrical shock, right? And next, he waved his hands over my entire head and made what seemed like a sign of a cross directly in front of my face. He then moved his hands over my head and around my chest. All the while, another assistant standing behind me slightly pulled down my collar. Suddenly, he put his hand on my chest, and I felt a small bit of pressure. He squeezed my arm and said, be with God. Then he moved on to the next person. He did perform the same motions for each person. He always seemed a little bit different. So when we finished, when he finished with the entire group, the volunteers handed out our original piece of paper with the names of suggested medicine we should consider purchasing from any pharmacy. Our talk with our doctor about the suggestions to help with our complaints. So Sal... Also stated with the paper was the name of the book, Essentia Vibrational, which is translated to Vibrational Essence, which you could buy at the premise. So the entire process took about 30 to 40 minutes to complete. And when I left the room, the people who exited with me noted small scratch marks on their skin. A person next to me noticed, pointed at my check and said, a chest and said I had blood on my chest. And I looked down and I had a small circle of congealed blood exactly where Chico placed his hands on my chest. I had not felt any pain whatsoever. And yes, I did feel better. I went in hoping for relief from back pain, and it lasted for about nine months. I felt like I was much better. And of course, being as dumb as I am, I did something stupid, you know, like trying to shovel dirt without my back brace, and uh, then my back went out again. Now, I went back this year, earlier this year, and I've been feeling better again. So, you know, I, I recommend it to anyone. You know, was my improvement psychosomatic or actual improvement helped by the spirits? I, I believe that my faith, the power of my mind, indeed helped my body heal. But there was added assistance from the spirit to directed energy where it would be useful. Now, let's take a quick break. And we'll come back with the next, the next type of of a medium in mind. So let me come back and talk for talk. Also, I'm going to give you a message I've recorded about thoughts are an open book because it's important that spirit is. Not only do we have to maintain what we do and say, we really have to start working on our thoughts. Did you know that spirits completely penetrate our thoughts, that we are an open book to spirits? So anything we think can be picked up good, bad spirits, by spirits in other spheres, in higher heavenly spheres. Every, All of our thoughts are present for everyone to look at. And this is first told to us in chapter 9 of the Spirits book, in the section titled, Penetration of Our Thoughts by Spirits, in question 456. And the question asks, do spirits see everything that we do? And the answer is, they can't do so if they choose, since they are incessantly around you. But practically, each spirit sees only those things to which he directs his attention, for he pays no heed to those which do not interest him. The next question, which Alan Kardec wanted to explore more, is can spirits see our most secret thoughts? And the answer is, they often see what you would feign to hide from yourselves. Neither acts nor thoughts can be hidden from them. And in this vein, in the book, the Banes of Mediumship, there's a, there's a forward by Emmanuel that tells us that all our thoughts are like, ra- are like radio waves. Our thoughts, like our brains, our bodies are like a radio tower. Everything we think goes out into the universe. So every, th- every action we do is preceded by thought, and those thoughts are, are open to anyone who wants to intercept them. So it's just something to, th- to keep in mind. So as we try to improve on Earth, It's not just our action. It's not just keeping our mouth closed. It's also improving our thoughts and making a habit of only thinking good thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this this small little moment of information about the spirit world and yourselves. Welcome back. Again, if you have any questions, 
call in 858-769-4705, 858-769-4705, or write a note on the chat room. I've had people in the chat room look like they're logging in, but no one has questions so far. So again, if, if you have questions on something else I'm talking about, that's fine. I wander off the subject, as you well know, uh, so can you. So next, automatic writing medium. So automatic writing is also described as psychographing. So this is whereby a medium either writes down the words the spirit transmits to to her or his mind or allows the spirit to control the muscles in their hand to let the spirit actually write the words. The most famous and prolific psychographing medium was Francisco, also called Chico C. Xavier. Now, look up Francisco Xavier in uh, Amazon and you'll find many books by him and you cannot miss, you know, but look for No Solar. If you're going to read one of his books, read that one first. You'll love it. He was born in 1910 in Brazil and started automatic writing at the age of 21. And in 1931, in Pedro Leopoldo, which is uh, uh, Chico's hometown, he started to psychograph the book, The Parnasso de Alain Tumulo. And that year was marked by the medium's adulthood. Right? It was the year the medium met his spiritual mentor, Emmanuel. It was under a tree near a water reservoir. So, and Chico was told, his mentor told him, that his mission was to psychograph a sequence of 30 books. And the spirit explained to him that to achieve such a task would, would demand three very important conditions. Discipline, discipline, and discipline. Also, Emmanuel told him that he must always be loyal to to Jesus and Kardec, even though it was against his religious basis. And later on, the medium found out that Manuel had been the Roman senator Publius Lentulus, who was further reborn as a slave who sympathized with Christianity. And still another reincarnation, he had been a Jesuit priest, Manuel de Nobrega, who was involved with the evangelization of Brazil. So, another example of how we improve in life after life, right? We we come back, we help, we, we, we advance, and we can actually help other people. So Chico on his psychography was attacked by being one of the large leads of imposters. And Chico said that he could never fall down since he never stood up. I mean, what that meant is that that the money he got from his books he put into a, he put into a, he set up a, a charity. All the proceeds from his books were donated to charities and spiritists. He knew that selling the services that he received as a gift from God is, is immoral. So he would psychograph these books. And he would use the, he used the money. Now, he also used the money to help support his little foundation and other people. And the range of books written by Chico was enormous, from books by deceased poets, suicide, young men describing learning at school in heaven, to books by Emmanuel, which were the past lives of people who knew why he was on earth including Emmanuel's first encounter with Jesus Christ, in which he was at first completely rejected. He completely rejected Jesus. And then, of course, I talked about the most interesting thing of books is by the physician, Dr. Andre Luis, who wrote about his own death and experiences in the lower zone and his entrance into Nosolar. And so also, she goes the first person to tell the world he never wrote anything. He only wrote what was communicated to him by the spirit room. He wrote a total of 469 books before he died on June 30th, 2002. And his death occurred right after Brazil won the World Cup. Because he wished he would die on a day that wouldn't make the Brazilians too happy. Isn't that a wonderful, wonderful sentiment? Okay, let's get to our next type. The presentiment medium. So, again, Chico wasn't only a medium for psychograph. He, he possessed every type of talent that a medium could possibly contain. He also knew the future. So here's an example. There was a time in the mid-80s, 1980s, when Chico told a group that Brazil would be a major oil exporter and that the oil would be found over 5,000 meters under the sea. Now, everyone laughed, right? Because Brazil, remember, it was a sugar cane. Brazil never found any oil. They were trying to, you know, help with the cost of importing oil by having, you know, this op- uh, the alcohol ethanol type oil and of course you know 
they now they're successful. They're a major oil producer from fields of oil found out in the deep ocean. So everyone wants to know the future, the future, except when they realize what will really happen. And therefore, a medium is only able to tell the future based on the information given to them by their familiar spirit. And according to the doctrine of spiritism, the higher the spirit, the greater the distance in the future they will be able to see. Lower spirits are only able to detect the distance in the future in a very limited range. And often they will tell untruth just to play games. High spirits won't give, any, won't give you information that does not assist you in your quest to become a better spirit. And prophecies are usually given to us to provide motivation to achieve a goal or a warning that we are not on the right path. So, hence, you go, let's say you go to a fortune teller and you're getting, okay, you know, she's telling you she's challenging the spirit. If there's a fortune teller that's telling you something, it's probably from a lower spirit because you can only see a limited amount of time ahead. And they may tell you, oh, yeah, you're going to find this ring here or you're going to do this. But higher spirit, the higher spirit is only going to tell you things that mostly are spiritually uplifting or of practical help to you as far as in your ability to ascend in your spiritual knowledge. They're not going to tell you, you know, buy this stock or bet on this horse. If they try to do that, you know, and again, this is, this is, this, uh, covered a lot in Alan Kardec's book is how to tell the difference between a high and a low spirit. They will tell you spiritually uplifting, important things. A low spirit will tell you who knows what. And this is where I understand when I have uh, people, you know, very religious Christians, uh, you know, she never talked to any spirits. I said, yes, I understand. You can talk to spirits that will tell you bad things, right? They will lead you down the wrong path. That's why spiritism says you have to learn to discern on the type of information you're getting. So yes, you do have to be careful. So mediumship, you know, of course, is important. It plays a vital part to spiritism. And mediums are communication linked to the spirit realm. And they are used to help solve mental issues, promote physical health, teach and even instruct disgruntled spirits who come to meetings. And whereas in past times, human race would be delivered instructions through prophecy, the domain of a select few, the, per, the proliferation of mediums from Brazil, is a harbinger for the world at large. So those I've I've gone through the different types of the you know the major categories of mediumship, and I want to just kind of close as far as talking about different categories of what Henri Louis says in this book that he inspired right in the domain of mediumship, where he talks with an instructor all of us. And this is what he says, I consider mediumship today is similar to the prophecies of the past. And his instructor says, yes. With the difference being that mediumship today is a concession of God to humanity that reflects the maturity of human understanding. Mediumistic phenomenon is not new. Only the form in which it is disseminated. Different creeds existing for centuries were paralyzed with a spectacle of exterior demonstrations making celestial revelations incomprehensible. So, we are told the same message for the timing of Alan Kardec's Spirits book, that we are ready to listen. Spiritism, through the messages of mediums, such as those who worked with Alan Kardec or the great, late, great Chico Xavier, is causing us to see Jesus and the spirit world in a more complete light. The shadows that existed when reading the New Testament are being removed by the knowledge that is brought to us via mediumship. This is very important to realize. Again, what, what does Spiritism tell us? Spiritism tells us that the messages that were sent in the Old and the New Testament were messages sent to the people with the cultural and technological advancement at their time. We have advanced a certain state, we are being told things that we can understand. I am sure there are many more things that we have no clue that we are just as 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 you know backward as we think you know they were six thousand years ago. But we are being told more and more. That is what spiritism is telling us. Is that in and the messages? It's not like 
it, it's not like we should take like the Bible that was written and you should never you know change your interpretation or anything no we are being told things all, all you know each year you know different to different mediums we are on this planet of atonement this is what spiritism tells we're on this planet we are here on earth to learn we are like children going to grade school learning how to be civilized learning how to play with our neighbors play with our friends and share at some time when we learn to, to be kind generous loving fraternal people this planet will be a planet of regeneration this is why the spirit world is now giving us this gift because to help us get to that next level to help us understand karma is real reincarnation is real the spirit world is real and when we all understand and accept that fact it should radically change our behavior because then we know whatever we do in this life we will pay for it in the next life and i you know i talk about you know this this communication in fact in nde near-death experiences are a form of communication and I've written two books, and the latest one I've written is The Spirit World Talks to Us. And I go through each person's near-death or other experiences and what, and what they were told, what they saw, and what it actually means, and help them understand what they saw. I had one person who was amazed that when he told me his NDE and I came back, I, this is what the Spirit World wanted you to find out. He said, oh, it helps me so much. And no, no one else has told me that, and it all fits. And this is where we need to understand. Spiritism has got so many answers. I mean, I'm sure there's more. We don't know. And I don't want to talk like I'm a know-it-all. Because I know, you know, the more I, as they say, the more you know, the more you know you don't know anything. But this will help you. So, yeah, read the spirit world talks to us. That, and are the what really happens during their death experiences. It will explain those type of experiences and what's happening to these people. You know, read the Spirit's book. Read books by uh, Chico Xavier or Vian Pira or other Spiritist authors. You will you will understand what has been communicated to us and why, right? Why? Why at this time? Because we are starting the last leg of, and you'll hear like this from you know Christianity and Christian ministers saying of the the end times. Well, what spiritism says on the end times, it, and they said more people will be mediums, right? So yes, we're more mediums. The end times is going to be gradual, and it will not be uh, you know, a huge revelation. It's going to be of where more and more people understand we have multiple lives. Karma is real. There's reincarnation. And people become better and better people because you'll know that if you, know, if you want to make a lot of money and you want to do it by treating people horribly or by stealing or by conning people, that whatever temporary pleasures you get by stealing, stealing money or harming people to get, to get what you want is never worth it. Yet, when you help others and you do good deeds, you'll be rewarded a hundredfold in the spirit world. Those are the eternal truths that the spirit world wants us to know. So I hope you've enjoyed this program on this Christmas day. I have enjoyed speaking to everyone. And I will put this on my blog too so you can always go back and and listen to this episode so thanks again i want to bless everyone who has been on here uh listening and i uh, just want to bless everyone to have a wonderful christmas and again invite anyone who's in the seattle area we are on bainbridge island we have meetings we're going to start i think it's january 8th the, the second sunday i think new year's day is on Sunday, the 1st, 2006, uh, I'm sorry, 2017. We'll start up on the next Sunday at 6 o'clock. So please, if you're in the neighborhood, come see us. You know, we're a very small group, and we'd love to have more. And please, look, look at my blog, look at the books, read The Other Spirits by Alan Kardec. And just, I tell you, the more you learn, the more calm you will be, You'll be able to withstand the knowing that our life here on earth is but a short little episode that we're here to learn and that that everything you think is terrible and will last forever will just last like a blink of an eye. God bless all of you. And please, we have this radio program every week on Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern 
to 4 p.m. at and then of course 4 p.m. Pacific. God bless all of you. I would like to thank everyone for listening to our program on Cardac Radio, and to point you in the direction to find more information about the spirit world around us. You can visit my blog at www.nwspiritism.com. Again, that is www.nw, as in Northwest, spiritism.com. And if you are ever in the Northwest, I certainly would welcome to have you come to our meeting on Bainbridge Island near Seattle in the state of Washington. Many blessings to all of you, and please continue to explore spiritism and the spirit world around us.